Hello, George Romanich here. In today's video, we are going to derive mass continuity equation in the pressure coordinate system. Pressure coordinate system or isobaric coordinate system is a coordinate system in which we use pressure to measure vertical distance from Earth's surface instead of geometric height that we use in everyday Cartesian coordinate system. I also talked in several videos about various benefits of this coordinate system in atmospheric sciences. The most obvious one being that air density disappears in the uh, expressions for horizontal components of pressure gradient force. And also in my previous video, so I suggest you check it out, I introduced the concept of omega vertical motion, which is substitute for vertical velocity that we use in Cartesian coordinates. So in Cartesian coordinates, W is dz over dt, uh, change of geometric height with time, but in isobaric coordinate system we use omega concept and omega is basically change of pressure with time as we move up or down. So when we know that, and by that I mean basics of pressure coordinate system and the concept of omega vertical motion, let's go and derive mass continuity equation in the isobaric coordinate system. Now to derive mass continuity equation in the pressure coordinate system, let's look at this parcel of air that has length delta x width delta y and height delta z. Now this parcel of air moves around. That means in terms of volume, this parcel of air has volume delta v that is, well, delta x, delta y, delta z. That's simple. But from the hydrostatic equation, we know that delta p is equal negative rho g delta z, where rho is air density and g is gravitational acceleration. And you have to always keep in mind that delta p is positive, for delta z being negative. In other words, as we are going close, as we are approaching surface, delta z is negative, but pressure is increasing. So if I express this equation in terms of delta z and substitute here, I will get that delta v is equal negative delta x delta y delta p over rho times g. Now further delta m which is mass of air in this cube is equal well rho delta v which means let me write here now delta m is equal negative delta x delta y this rho will cancel with this rho and I will get delta p over g. However, we also know that mass must be conserved if we neglect some nuclear reactions, which means that delta m, uh, sorry, which means that d dt of delta m needs to be zero. Namely, mass following the motion is conserved. Well, this is further equal d dt, so d dt of delta m, but delta m is this over here, and that is minus delta x delta y delta p over g. Now I can multiply this by negative one and carry out this differentiation to get delta y delta p over g d of delta x del dt plus, so I differentiated x, now delta x delta p over g and now I differentiate delta y with respect to dt. 
הן ראסט רי פרס, דלתא אקס, דלתא וואי, אובר ג'י, ג'י זה קונסטנט, אוף קורס, די אוף דלתא פי, אובר די טי, אנד דאט איז איקוול זירו. Now I will divide entire equation by delta x, delta y, delta p. And that will give me, and also multiply by g. And that will give me that 1 over delta x, d, delta x, dt, plus 1 over delta y, d delta y dt and plus 1 over delta p d delta p dt equals 0. Now we need to recognize something from uh, mathematical analysis. And that something is the following. I will write it here. This d dt is a differential operator and it's a linear differential operator. And this delta is small difference as we can see, delta x, delta y, delta z. Because d dt is a linear operator as well as delta, we can exchange the order of d dt and delta and rewrite this equation as 1 over delta x delta of dx dt plus 1 over delta y delta of dy dt and plus 1 over delta p delta of dp dt equals 0. But now notice that this is u component of wind, this is v component of wind, and this is omega vertical motion, which means that this equation becomes delta u delta x plus delta v delta y plus delta omega delta p equals zero. And now I let delta x, delta y, as well as delta p to go to zero in the limit case. And this equation becomes delta u delta x plus delta v delta y plus delta omega delta p equals zero. And this is the mass continuity equation in the pressure coordinate system, where you have to keep in mind, I will put it here in black, that these are now at the p equal constant. Namely, divergence is evaluated on the isobaric surfaces. What is the main advantage of this equation? Well, clearly there is no density that appears in the mass continuity equation if we use pressure coordinate system. There is no density and also there are no density derivatives with respect to time. All of these were present in the mass continuity equation in the Cartesian coordinate system. You will kindly remember that we had the same conclusion when we dealt with the pressure gradient force in the P coordinate system. Namely, in the Cartesian coordinate system, pressure gradient force is 1 over rho nabla along constant height z of p, that's pressure gradient force, but this is equal negative nabla along constant pressure surfaces of phi, 
where you will remember that phi was geopotential g times z. In other words, the pressure gradient force also loses air density. And in atmospheric sciences, we like to eliminate density whenever possible. Again, the same benefit. Benefit of removing density. However, you will agree that in the case of mass continuity equation, the benefit is doubled because density here disappeared as a constant, but also disappeared in form of time derivative of density. So you see that pressure coordinate system is something that makes a lot of sense, at least in atmospheric sciences, and we use it a lot. Equations become more simple when compared to Cartesian coordinate system. Until next video, goodbye.